Welcome to the first In the Pits News Report. I'm Adam Kuhn. Today we're discussing the iRacing In the Pits News Truck Series regular season finale that's this weekend, plus the most recent weekend in NASCAR, SRX, and short track racing with an upcoming weekend of natural and sports car racing. JCTV lead commentator and producer Josh Coppernell joins the show as he and myself will chat with Andrew Elias, Dalton Kelly, Brett Bennett, and Michael Kruger to talk about this weekend's cut race and the season thus far for the iRacers in this second Truck Series season. Welcome to the ITPN Report where I'm joined by... Josh Coppernell. Andrew Willis. Dalton Kelly. <laughs> Brett Bennett. And Michael Kruger. And I'm Adam Kuhn, and we're here to recap the In the Pits News Truck Series race at IOP this last weekend and the regular season finale at Talladega this weekend, Josh. Yeah, it was, IRP was uh, a crazy race for uh, Felver, who absolutely dominated the race, uh, led so many laps, and uh, really didn't have much uh, competition. But, you know, now we, we turn to Talladega and... Anything can happen. That's a big wild card. Absolutely, and we are joined by three drivers racing for just two positions pretty much left in the playoffs. Andrew, four straight top tens off of IOP. What's it going to take to steal a playoff position this Saturday night? It's going to take some uh, top five and some stage points probably, Adam. Need to have a lot better finishes than the bottom half of the top ten, like I've been having at these these past few tracks. But just need to keep it clean and need to, you know, keep it in one piece at the end to be able to battle for that win. Hopefully, get one. Eighth place in the points, Dalton Kelly missed out at IOP this weekend, but you got a sixth place run at Charlotte Rover a couple weeks ago. How's that momentum gonna try and help you this weekend? Well, with uh, Talladega and Daytona as well, they're just crapshoots. It's just about survival. And uh, Roval, we had a good run. A little bit of a run in, battling lap traffic. Still managed to get P6, and it's a pretty good run. Had a stretch of top fives before that, dating all the way back to after Iowa. Just if we can keep riding that momentum towards the playoffs, we'll be fine. Uh, as far as Talladega, I think if we just take out Brett lap one, that should be good to go. Um, I don't like this plan. Just survive the uh, crapshoot, take out a teammate or two, we should be able to scoot right on in. Yeah, I think uh, I, uh, my entire, I don't even know what my plan is at this point. It's, it's If I can get stage points, I'm going to go after them, but at the same time, I'm not going to push and try to tear up my car, because I know I'm pretty much, if I can just, I just have to outpoint Dalton or Andrew, and I'll be in. So I've kind of got to just race conservatively until the end. Unless, like, if Andrew gets stage points, that changes the um, picture completely. Because I think, from what I've, past car I think Dalton was saying, he was probably going to ride in the back. So, that changes the equation. But, at the same time, I feel like entering ahead of them, I have to almost be conservative and just make sure I have a clean truck at the end. And then if we have to late, we can get aggressive. But not how I want to race a plate race, but we'll see what happens. Uh, going off what Brett said, I have about 10 plans, and none of them include helping out Brett or Dalton. And every single plan that I've told him I have, whether I'm hanging back or going for stage points, one of them might be correct, but I'm just like, keep bouncing off <laughs> random ideas. But none of them, they have no idea what I'm going to do. Actually, I, yeah, I kind of don't have an idea of what I'm going to do, but like I said, none of my plans include helping Dalton or Brett right now. I'm willing to help both Boy Blue and Dalton if it benefits me. Which Andrew, if we just take out Brett on lap one, we're good to go. I don't like this idea. Just I mean, saying. every every single week we've had an ITPN so far, I've had thoughts of taking out Brett on lap one, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah, see, lap one, if we just box him and just take him out, we're good to go. We're going to make it. That's all we got to do. I have, I have raced. Well, if you, if you, you guys know that if you take me out lap one, I am repairing damage, and I am getting back out on track, and you are well, not finishing the again. race. <laughs> well, I, I've seen <laughs> Brett race again. at Daytona and Talladega, and I don't think we need to worry about 
you know, Brett getting taken out or Brett damaging himself. It's going to happen. So we just yeah. wait it out and we'll be fine. Maybe. No, um, I, I have like to work with either of y'all. I've said this to y'all both, but like it's, it hurt, it does hurt us as a team to go back to just the general plans. The fact that all three of us are battling against each other. Because the whole key to success at plate races is, is having the having the numbers, and if we're fighting with each other, the radius and the radius and the vortex will just absolutely destroy us in terms of pace. We won't be able to compete with them because they in, are. In my opinion, that that's fine at at a plate race. They can go work together. They can destroy us. But what it comes down to, this is a battle of our own. And we have to look out for ourselves in this race. And the way I think no, I... Throughout, throughout this year, like if I was getting lapped or if somebody faster was passing me, I've given them the space. And I, I feel like the way that I race people, I have a, a lot more than teammates behind me, you know, on Saturday. So I've got a question for you guys. And, um, you know, I like what, uh, you know, you're saying, uh, Andrew, is, you know, to kind of, you think for yourself where Brett, he's thinking for team, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, team points as well. And you guys recently took the team points lead over Did we? Uh, Vortex. <laughs> um, I so, you know, as far as obviously, you know, the bragging rights of a driver's championship is you know, huge. You want that. You want to win the championship driver's championship. But does that also, with the team points, trying to win a uh, championship for the team, um, you know, does that really come into play on how you guys want to attack Talladega? I mean, to be pretty concise for this race, I'd say hell no. Like this is this is the one that you have to go out and be, you know, working for yourself. I still disagree to an extent like obviously late in the race it's going to be every man for himself between us and i think that's always kind of been the case of plate tracks like comes down the last two lap or two the goal i've, I've told you all this in every plate race we've done which is my goal one is that one of our trucks wins goal number two is that i win on the last lap always it's been where if i can make a move for the win without really compromising our chance as a team of winning I'll take it, but at the same time, I'm not going to compromise the chance of a team winning. It changes the math with the points because I want to make the playoffs. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't see any reason to race it differently until the final like five laps. I, I just think that opens the door for me to go ahead and tell you with four laps to go that I'm sticking with you the whole time. Uh, that, uh, that just makes it easy prey for me, man. Andrew, I already know not to trust you. You hung me out the dry like twenty times at Daytona. So this is true. <laughs> this is very true. When it comes, you were, to you were the back, worst teammate. You were the worst teammate at Daytona. But I'm a <laughs> good teammate everywhere else. else. Yes, but you were terrible at Daytona. <laughs> hey, when I when I see I have a chance to win, and in this particular case, getting the playoffs, like I. I I feel that team was, bets I was are about off. To say, I was about to say, though, you had a chance to win at Daytona, too, and you just didn't take it. You just pushed Kruger. I already I caused know. a wreck. I didn't, I didn't want to cause the second one. I, I felt bad, but... Yeah, but you the wrecked the teammate, side, but didn't wreck the non-teammate. Hey, <laughs> on, on the bright side, now we have a good friend, Michael Kruger. <laughs> yes. Hmm. <laughs> The and I, 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 I have a feeling, the, the way I feel, just the way that Mike's always raced me, is I feel that if we were coming to the line, there's probably a 60% probability that he would stick behind me rather than try to pass me. I might be talking out of my butt here, but I feel like Mike might push me as a non-teammate. I feel the same way about Mike, though, so, you know, that's not... Me and you both were on the same team in the six hours. But no, uh, I, the one advantage I feel like I have is that time and time again at plate races, I've shown that if you go with me to the outside line, we will get to the, the front. Like, I'm going to get to 68 in that line. 
Oh yeah, unless you got the sixty-eight in that line, but that's a completely another story. Uh, Tyler is not a good pusher. He blinks, and yeah, yet he won last year. So plate yeah, track ace. Friends are where you find them until you see that sixty-eight behind you. Then yeah, you're just your friends are whoever's in the other lane. Your friends are who's ever in the other lane. Yeah, you might as well be drag racing and pull the parachute halfway down the strip. The worst part, the worst part is, I'm pretty sure this weekend, because of other plans, he, Tyler will be the only other SBLD member in this race to work with us. You say work with us, but but by work with us, I mean no, that's the problem. Hey, Adam, what do you think about giving a? Josh a week off so he can come out in the field with us. <laughs> I, I, it looks like I need some help here. <laughs> I don't know if you can trust me in, any right. row, in Iverson, on anything. No, you, you could take the broadcast. I just need a friend out there, and I think Josh can help me. No, I'm I mean, friends I with guess. Andrew, it's but really Andrew doesn't seem to trust me for some reason. Now listen, you ever see the 25 and 47 get close to each other on any track? It's time to bail out and go to the rear. <laughs> or if and you, you have know. the 47 in your mirror on a restart, you, yeah. you're just dead. At a road course. At a road course. <laughs> yeah. It should be noted, at a road course needs to be added to this. If you're at a track that has a turn. I've only wrecked, I've only wrecked I think, twice this year. And in the pits news. You uh, like that one. <clears throat> no, I forgot about the Roval. I kind of, I kind of did a little bit of wrecking there, if you want to call it that. I don't know what you were doing at the Roval, but it wasn't recent. Hey, two of those three chicane cuts were your fault. I'll have you know. Uh, yeah, my fault that I spun out of the racing line. Yeah, you spun out of the racing line, but I thought you might still be on the racing line. Either way, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's been a pretty semi-dismal run for us, like, the last couple of weeks. I mean, I think our best finish was, like, Dalton 6 at the Roval, right? Uh, the last two weeks, yeah. Before that, you got 4th at Nashville, but... Yeah, it's... It's Wait, you beat Dalton? Man. You beat Dalton at Nashville? Yeah, it's not yeah. about that final corner. Yeah, Dalton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really want to he, he wobble with the final corner. He had that spot locked up, and he just didn't even take it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, don't I don't even want. Do. I don't even to want. Done. Don't even drag me down that rabbit hole of <laughs> Nashville right now. <laughs> I, I think. We should, uh, I, honestly, I, I think enough. we should discuss. I think we should discuss no, Nashville. No, no. I think we should discuss Nashville. I think we should discuss Iowa. Speaking of which, what happens if we see David Durand at Talladega? I'm not doing anything. Like I'm, I'm running my own race. Like, I'd, like I'd all screwed. I see, like you guys but, might as well be AI. Like that's that's the way I'm concerned. Like you guys might be AI. Like because I don't care how you guys do. Like I'm looking out for myself this race. Like. You could say team this, team that, Brett, but like you know, deep down, like you're trying to get yourself in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, and if you're behind me. If you here's, the behind thing. Me, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If me and Dalton go. work together, if me and Dalton work together, and you don't, then us two make the playoffs, and you don't. Go for it. Well, remember though, like I could work with Andrew as well because he helped me at Daytona, and I could repay but... him the favor also. Who drove a clean first two hours of the six hours of Watkins Glen last s Saturday, you know? From what I saw, not you. Yeah, but Mine was no clean as shit. Not, the, not uh, on Friday hey, night. Hey, 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 language, dude. Sorry, my bad. Friday night, yeah, Friday night the, might uh, be a different... Oh, uh, that was on Friday night, and uh, we don't talk about that. That was the first hours. Uh, the S's... It turns out that you have to break in the boot and that they're not the S's. Fun fact. All I know is, like, we, we're going to have a bunch of guys who haven't raced a bunch this year going and racing Talladega. It's probably going to be messy early. Um, but whoever can take, like, me bumping them from behind and whoever sticks behind me, if I can have a team of three, I don't care who it is. It could be, you know, it could be Richard Nixon for all I care. Like, if, if they... If they can draft well and hang out in the back for a little bit, then I'm good with it. It doesn't matter what team they're on. 
Well, like, if getting second or third gets me into the playoffs, I'm going with it. But if it means I have to beat you both, then I'm that's what I'm going to try to do. I still think we should pass a rule change. A rule change totally not because it benefits us that you can't drop. The Talladega can't be your drop race. Yes. So we all three can get in. We just Four. make up rules as we go. Exactly. No, Brett's trying, trying to, to make it so... Here, right? Brett's trying to make it so all three of us are guaranteed in, essentially. Yeah, because if, if Ta- you can't drop Talladega, then Duran might be missing Talladega, so there's a chance we could all three get in. Just the way I've been seeing it, I've been seeing it, though, as a big opportunity to pick up a third wheel in the season, because it feels, just coming in this weekend, Dega means a lot to me, because it's my home, pretty much my home track, pretty much, because I'm from Alabama. I'm only in, live an hour and a half from Dega, so it means a lot to, like, just race at Talladega, whether it's, like, an racing or whatever. And I just see, like, this weekend as an opportunity to win, but because, um, just not just that, but I won the season over at Daytona. I'm thinking of wanting to, um, whip out the brooms and possibly sweep the super speedways uh, for ITPN, but also at the same time, just given everything going on with ITPN, well, not ITPN, but SBLD close to the playoff cut line and how close they are on points, it puts me kind of in a box. Like, I want to work with these guys and help as much as I can, but the problem is they're all working against each other, and I want to kind of play it safe and make it to the end, but... Also, like, I want to be aggressive and try to get stage points to possibly a stage win, but I want to make it to the end and survive, and it's just really tricky, like, with all the circumstances going on. Side note, um, my spoiler pick is that Ke- is that everybody is going to wreck at Talladega, and Caleb McCurry, because he never wrecks, he always keeps his car clean, will be the only clean car at the end and will win and steal the playoff spot from all of SBLD. Honestly, that is my... If I, mean, I had that to is lose exactly how a tiny. playoff spot to anybody, I would be happy to lose it to Caleb because he's the oh, I agree driver. Completely. He's the nicest guy. And yeah, he's not. He doesn't like, always would... have the most pace, but like he just keeps it so clean, and like there's never. I've never had any issues racing him. The thing, ever. Is, the thing is, he does have pace sometimes, but like he would prefer to race clean than have a wrecked car. Yeah, which... I mean. I mean, like, really yeah, like with you introducing the possibility. <laughs> yeah, you introducing the possibility of Caleb Wing. That's the thing. Like, literally, like we're talking about like us and all having a chance at winning. Radius, Vortex, Peak, um, whoever else winning. Like, we could have like a some guy that's not talked about that much could just come out and just steal the win from all of us when no, we're Noah Maori is technically a possibility, but. Knowing his season, he will be leading, and then he will wreck. That, well, like, that... Yeah, Denver. like, yeah, like, but I feel like this time though he he'll stay though. I mean, I feel a bit guilty though that I took him out like at Daytona because after <laughs> the big wreck happened, like after a pit stop, he was leading. But the problem was I accidentally spun him coming going down the back after the restart so i, I mean he, he might have some serious pace um at dega and he could definitely be a contender and could definitely steal the win from y'all and yeah, my only my, my only thing i know is noah has he has been leading i think we are on excluding the roval which he was a dn a D, did not start at the last three races he has been leading and has wrecked out of the league at lead in the last three races He's run. IRP, he was leading, wrecked. Uh, Michigan. Or did he even start IRP? He might not have started IRP. No, no he's, I think yeah, he, was, IRP, I th- he was leading and he got together with Alonzo and it was Netco. He, he didn't even touch Alonzo, I didn't think. I thought yeah, he just was, slammed the wall. No, his screen probably showed him getting into it with Alonzo. Alonzo oh. said Netcode. It looked weird. I don't know. I don't yeah, know exactly. When, when I looked at it right after the race, it looked like they had two feet between them. From my yeah. screen, at least. On the broadcast, at Michi- I saw it then, I said netcode, and it looked like they might have touched, but Alonzo said they didn't at all on his end. On, on the bright side, they were both, like, chill about it, yeah. you know? And, at and- Michigan, he spun out of the lead, though. Like, I remember Michigan. And that I, one I was... Feel- that was weird that as shit that he spun one, out yeah. at Michigan. Yeah, because, like, you don't get loose. It's... The car wasn't super loose at Michigan. Like, Well, you get it. I, I noticed it at Michigan, like... I don't know what it was, and like 
in that race, you would get a little bit loose coming off four if you went the lower line. I don't know how he wrecked, though. I think that's what happened. I think also, Dal- if I remember right, Dalton was right behind him, but he wasn't close oh, enough really to take early. the air. I don't think he was close enough to take the air off of him, so I'm not sure what happened there. And then if I remember right, he also wrecked at Homestead, because that's the only reason I can think of why he would f- have finished 10th at Homestead, because he was he's really good there. Yeah, I mean, Noah's had, whenever, before, like, or before Noah ever really had an incident, he's had some ridiculous pace, so, I mean, yeah. if he could have a clean race, he could be a dangerous threat, possibly, and could he could win one of these races. Uh, the the other two drivers who could make the playoffs with a win are Durand, and David Durand, will, I, I, my theory on David Durand at plate races is that he has zero chance of winning, because Every plate race I've done with him, he is very, very aggressive. He is throwing blocks throughout the race. Ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? No, there's. I'm aggressive, but I am not as aggressive as David Durand at plate races. Like, there's a. I'm. A, he's even a level above me in aggressiveness at plate races. I just. I. I the thing. The thing that's going to change everything. I feel, and. There's just such a small chance of all three of us surviving towards the end, because yeah. it's not the usual crowd that's coming out. We're gonna have additional people because it is a plate race yeah. for everybody. And has we a don't. Chance. And, and also, we don't have our normal SBLD numbers because yeah. we're missing almost all. Dawson's out. Brian's out. Danny's out. I assume Toasty's out. But we're gonna um, have people coming out of the woodworks to try and win this race who basically haven't run all year. And yeah, I'm gonna see if gonna I can go convince. And that's gonna go and throw a uh, you know something into the mix that I think it's gonna make it it's gonna make it more competitive, but I think it's gonna make it a lot more incident prone rather than just the normals running it. I might see if we can get our we have two teammates who aren't currently in the league, and I might see if I can get them to, if they're interested in running this weekend. Yeah, I mean Je- for Jeffrey and Oscar, this I is mean, gonna get, be a really big field. Yeah, I mean it given. Will. Given like how this could be a big field though, like all right, I mean I don't mean to take this away from you, but just how like for me though, like I've just like given my circumstance with PBR, like how I've kind of lost teammates and don't really have any, like it's it's felt like that pretty much my friends I have at this moment is you guys really from S B L D to work with. <laughs> Cause like because so, I've been Yeah, thanks thanks Andrew. Cause like I've been like We'll work with you while small knifing each other in the back throughout the race. Yeah, like, because I've been thinking, because, like, if I go into Dagan, I never, like, really had much interaction with you guys. I'd have, like, no one to work with, really. I mean, it'd be, I mean, it'd be fascinating to work all by yourself, but you have no friends, really, to, like, communicate with or help. And I feel like it's, you guys are, like, the only you kind no of friends at, at, the, at the end of Daytona, you had no help either. And you is, won, I, know, so. I know that bike can get pushed. So if I go into the second stage knowing that second place gets me into playoffs, I will push Michael to to sweep the plate tracks again. Like, I have no problem with just sticking behind him the whole time. But that's what gets me into playoffs, because I know he knows how to lead, and I know he can take a push, you know? And I, I hate going to, like, y- you guys know how it is. Like, if you're used to pushing somebody that understands the track, and then you get behind somebody else, uh, I don't want to name names, but, like, and you bump them, and they get like all all crazy, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. Tyler like, Waterman, you mean? Yeah, but <laughs> Mike knows Mike knows how to plate race, so it's so much safer being behind him if you could. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest though. This is my opinion on the trucks. Is ever since I forget when it happened, because last year you could still push really good in the trucks. There was an update that they did at Talladega where now the best way to push is to not bump, but instead to, like, ride inches off the bumper of the truck in front. Like, just control your speed and push them, arrow push them. Yeah, at least that's my feeling. Oh, yeah, it, You go a lot faster if, like, everything is dependent on that third truck still. Oh, like, I agree. It's all, it's all yeah, absolutely. Like, like, that third truck, if you have somebody who hangs behind, like, it that's... kills the line. Oh, <laughs> <it's> completely. <laughs> completely. <laughs> completely. And like side drafting, you don't have to be really close to side draft in the trucks anymore. And yeah, you if you're getting cool. really close, you're just putting yourself at risk because you have that net code factor. I agree, but at the same time, it 100% is advantageous late in a race 
to yeah. side draft super hard. But you don't have to be as close anymore. Like you can yeah. be quite what, a bit what far bothers, away. What bothers me is when I'm up top and I'm running the top and there is a line you have to run to make the top work when it's just two lanes. Three lanes, you can make any lane work. It just depends. But so, when it's two lanes, you have to pinch in the corner and go to the wall on the straights. Just that's the way it is. And so many people want to pinch on the straightaways. And when you pinch on the straightaways, it just loses the momentum you have from running the top. Like, yeah. And, and the problem with pinching on the straightaways is, in my opinion, is everybody's like you got, let's say you're pinching on the top line to the bottom line. The bottom line, that's when they're bumping and they're a little bit squirrely and out of control on the straightaways. Like you're yeah. more out of control on the straightaways than you are in the corner. And yeah, if you want to side draft, you're side drafting somebody who's moving back and forth trying to bump right on. And so you're putting like yourself at risk. But if you don't mind, I'm going to Uno reverse card this baby. Adam Kuhn and Josh Coppernall, what would you do if you were in my shoes? Take it, I'm taking down <laughs> notes here, too. <laughs> Andrew, if I was in your shoes, I would um, try and make all my friends early in the race with everyone else, and then hopefully they're all surviving at the end. But um, that's why I'm not in your shoes, because I don't know what I'm doing on the racetrack a lot of times. Especially at playtracks, but I won them a lot. Uh, I'll tell you <laughs> what, I, I like to be up front, uh, personally. Um, it's just been the way I've always driven it at those kind of tracks. But you have control you know, and it's safer to be up front. The wrecks happen behind you. <laughs> knowing knowing that Talladega could be an extremely crazy race here th this weekend, and you know if there are more people that show up, you got to remember as well that a lot of times Talladega is where people go. This is my chance to get my only win that I, I possibly can get other than Daytona. So people drive more aggressively. I mean, freaking so, Tyler won last year. <laughs> you got to, you got to, you know, stay consistent, keep the nose clean, but at the same time, go out there and do what you got to do to, you know, be there in, in, in position to have a chance. Um, yeah, like for just referencing a little bit off of what, like for Josh was saying about like, uh, last year's race uh for last year's race like i mean like a, there were a lot of big wrecks in like the first half of the race that pretty much like thin most of if not a lot of the herd from competing it was literally yeah it literally turned into sbld with like five of like the 10 clean trucks left last year and then yeah. i thought i had the race one and then i didn't have the race one i th i think another thing like uh, one thing Brett mentioned, um, or I think Josh did, one of you two, about staying up front and controlling the race. Like last year, what I was trying to do uh, for my strategy in the Dega race was to pretty much stay up front and pretty much like be up there and try and compete with the leaders and just lead a lot of laps aggressively. And if you like, the, that strategy can work. Like you could stay up there all race and lead laps and control the field and everything. But like the thing is, if you get shuffled back just a little bit, like in the middle of the hornet's nest where all the pack is, that's you the are, place to be. You're, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable. So uh, yeah, like that happened to me where I was trying to push uh, Haynes um, up to the front and I was trying to move him up after I got shuffled from the front. It was it had to pit for repairs and was in the back and had to work my way back up to the front and I was vulnerable and I got spun in that big wreck that just took out a lot of cars and it just happened because I got shuffled out of the top spot and I mean just like basically just closing it you can your strategy you have for staying up front all race can definitely work but once you get shuffled back and off like the top dog spot, top three, top four, it's going to be hard to get back up there as you'll be easily vulnerable for wreck. So you better be careful uh, what moves you make if you get shuffled back. That's another thing that hasn't been mentioned is that there is bonus points for leading laps and for fastest lap. There is a bonus point. One thing how that... tight it is. Are you one thing that uh, you know I want to also mention is, uh, and I've I've said it before um, when broadcasting, and I, I still believe this as well is, you know, watching 
a driver like Alonso Chicano at, at Talladega. Now, obviously, we know he's going to be in the, the, the chase. But, um, you know, like, to me, it reminds me of a Joey Logano situation. You know, Joey Logano, he likes being up front. He right, will sure. do what he can to keep his truck out front. He wants to lead. And, uh, you know, if you're talking about controlling the race, you know, trying to, to be up there to control that race, it's going to be really difficult, you know, knowing that there are other people like Alonso Chicano that want to have that lead. He, he doesn't want to be back there. He wants that lead and to stay up. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> he kind of did that at Daytona. It was kind of a racing deal, but... <laughs> Well, for for what Josh just said, like Alonso, I mean, just get this out of the way. The dude's really—he's a really talented dude. He—he's—he's he's a bit aggressive at super speedway racing, but he knows exactly how to win them and how to put himself in position. He knows 100%. how to do that. Absolutely. Like I remember a day, Tony. Me and him have had a couple of run-ins at plate tracks. It's because both me, me and him typically are running towards the front of those races. Like, well, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Um, well, well, I remember at Daytona earlier this year, Alonzo was leading and with about six or seven to go, and I jump out to try and push Andrew, um, or just to try and get a run to see if anyone would go with me. And Andrew went with me, and I pushed Andrew to the lead, and Alonzo got past. And literally the next corner, heading into four, the first thing Alonzo does after losing the lead is to jump right out to the outside and go take that lead back because he wants control. He wants okay. that as he wants it yeah. badly. I mean, it's, that's how I typically. That's how I typically but, race. I mean, it's, it's, it's a mean, it's dangerous a, strategy. It has bit him more than it's helped him. I think because I've seen him <laughs> my, end up with junked plate codes a lot. But still, yeah, though, he. Oh, sorry, Brett. You go. I'm sorry. My rule at plate tracks typically is if I'm in the first two trucks in a line, I am happy. Once I am outside of, and sometimes I'm okay with third in line. Third in line is less. Because that's a little bit sketchier usually, but usually I want to be like either the first or second truck and either the inside or the outside line. And I will make. And usually, what I'm doing is I'm making moves to get to those first two spots in line. Like I'm willing to push or be the pusher. But for how um, I see like lanes and plate races, like if I want to be safe and like kind of ride back for a while, I'm gonna stick to the bottom line. And be like one well, of the last few cars on the lead, on like where the leaders are running, because like, I don't want to lose their draft. Obviously, I, I'm gonna sit there if I'm gonna be in the back. I'm not gonna try to ride the middle or top. But like, if I want to make moves and actually legit like aggressive moves, I'm gonna want to go to the middle, if not the top groove, because like that's where you're gonna make the passing. But you're also at that risk, risking yourself of limiting your ability to avoid incidents in front of you. Because with the bottom, you got options. You got, you have more like, well, not all the time, but most of the time, have awareness of wrecks that are occurring. Because you got the bottom, you can go to because they'll mostly drift top at most wrecks, and that's what that's like one of the detriments for being the middle or top is the wrecks will happen. They'll go up the track. And if you're up there, you'll mostly have almost nowhere to go until, by some circumstance, you miss it. Every plate race that we've done is, especially the people who don't show up as often and are like making one-off starts, tend to do this. Is there is a lot of people? I trust most people who run full time that if there's like see smoke in front of them or people start checking for a wreck that they're going to check up. I, there's been a lot of people getting run over when riding in the back when wrecks happen. I've noticed in here, and that's just, it's part of the beast, but you get people who, who apparently don't realize that on iRacing, your position is frozen as soon as the caution comes out. So it does you no good to try to accelerate through an accident. Passing people in an accident doesn't give you any positions. But people still try to do it, and I just don't understand it. Yeah, like, Wait, what you said, Brett? It's like it's not. This is not Arca. This is an Arca where there's no cautions and literally half the field wrecks where you can't just full throttle through and and pray and make it. Like a caution's going to come out if there's a wreck. There, a especially in a league, especially in a league race, because a league race they'll even throw it if it's like, like 
like you Emily, and real nice and orderly, and then it, it's it's like a podcast. Somebody's just gonna continually eat chips throughout it. Like somebody's <laughs> gonna mess it up. Language. I, didn't know, I did not know my popcorn was audible. By the way, I apologize for that. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good way of calling it out. <laughs> Fuck you. I was hungry. Hey, language, <laughs> Brett. Language, Brett. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, like... <laughs> <You're cheating. laughs> I'm yeah. not. I was finishing. I already had this a mouthful, why, okay? This is why I'm not helping about Dega. Dalton, we're partners now. I help I'll, you. I'll be willing to help, like, whoever you guys, but, like, when it gets down to it, it's going to be kind of hard working together. Hey, I, be like, I like how Mike talks in code. I, I know it's me. Thanks, Mike. Uh, no problem. You're having a lot of confidence in his VR last and all racist. Well, I mean, the way I figure, like, if Mike helps somebody else like if he helps Brad or helps Dalton you know kick me out of the playoffs in some way shape or form like man I would just hate to be Mike being around me for like the playoffs I really would hate that yeah it's uh, it's just uh, one of those I mean I'm just I, I'm not saying I'm gonna do anything I just really would hate to be around me yeah that's the other thing is that all of us if we miss the playoffs and somebody does something that causes us to miss the playoffs We'll have nothing to lose come the playoffs. Yeah, that makes and it that, really. Oh, sorry, Brett, you go. Which, that's one of the advantages. Is let's say like somebody decides to like let's say Alonzo's being overly aggressive and <clears throat> what? it happens to turn me in front. It happens to turn one of us. Like there's nothing like you other than other than being a good person. There's nothing stopping us from like just. Emily, I, I feel like me and Alonzo are probably not angry at each other for the first time in a while because the Roval be spinning them seem to hopefully put an end to a lot of our contact that we've had in the past. It won't. It obviously won't. Like it's, I'd never I guess it. No, like if if Mike breaks my heart, like I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be that jealous ex. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna be here for a bad time, man. You're you're gonna have flame and dog poop on your front porch. Like it's gonna happen. Yeah, like, I get what you're I mean, saying. I mean, I'm not trying. It's not. It's not a veiled threat. It is a threat. But I mean, it just. I just don't want you helping Dalton or Brett. Like I know that's it's so. For. That's one of the extremely hard parts, like working with you guys, since you, you guys are like the closest teammates I'll really have for this super speedway race. But it's gonna be hard because if I'm working with it, one of y'all, I'm not helping the other two. Like it's it's hard. This is this is like what makes it really hard to work with y'all. Like since you guys are in this box, like all of y'all are trying to get into the playoffs and y'all are fighting each other. That's like that's the hard part of it. And it's just I don't know how I'm gonna manage it when it comes race time to working with one but not working with the other two. That's just one thing that I'm just trying to figure out how to, to work out. Because, like, I would want to help one of, like, I would like to help all of y'all, but I just can only help one at a time. Now it's time for this week's In the Pits News Stop. Saturday night, Knoxville Raceway in Iowa played host to the lone national NASCAR event of the weekend, where the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series took to the half mile dirt track for their second dirt race of the season. Despite having the weekend off of cup duties, rookie in the series Todd Gerland returned to the truck series driving his father's DGO 17 Ford F-150 to a victory and the clean hard was 150, leading 58 laps in the second stage Saturday night. Carson Hosevar once again was set up for a remarkable finish despite his ink injury just two weekends ago where he won the opening stage at Knoxville and he was leading up into an expired Ilmore engine eliminated him from the race where he led a race high 65 laps. John Hunter Nemechek led 17 laps himself and fought up to a second place finish while Zane Smith finished third. Nemechek leads Smith by 5 points in the series standings while defending series champion Ben Rhodes ranks third 10 points back. Sammy Smith overtook Daniel Dye in the final lap Saturday night in Berlin, Michigan to win the Yarka Menard series annual visit 
to the 0.438 mile short track. Smith's Kyle Busch Motorsports number 18 got around Dali with 6 laps remaining as Dai's GMS Racing number 43 suffered an electrical failure. Dai was able to coast around for the final laps, but he was not able to take the checkered flag in the race in which he led 192 of the 200 laps. Tom Hesser and Jesse Love in Venerini Motorsports Toyota Camrys rounded out the top three finishers. The win for Sammy Smith is his first in the national leg of the Yarko Menard Series after winning the East Championship last season, and he also holds that same position recurrently in the East Division. Meanwhile, Raja Karuth maintains the top spot in the series with a singular point ahead of his rev racing teammate in Nick Sanchez. Dai sits third 11 points behind the two after his misfortunate weekend in Michigan. Down south this weekend, at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida, the Superstar Racing Experience kicked off their 2022 Six Race Summer Stint Live on CBS. Short track prowess Bubba Pollard joined the spectacle at the home of the Snowball Derby in which he won the opening heat race ahead of the likes of Tony Kanaan, series co-founder Tony Stewart, and Paul Tracy. Pollard was in for a great night, however it was all Helio Castroneves who took the second heat race due to an invert in the field and he stayed there for the rest of the night. The last minute entrant held off Pollard in the closing laps after Castroneves outdoed his good friend and countryman Tony Kanaan for his first victory in SRX competition. After his traditional fence climb, Elio confirmed he's pursuing a Daytona 500 attempt next season, thanks to CEO Don Hawk. Pollard rallied back from a flat tire to take over the second position in the cl closing laps, overtaking Ryan Newman, who finished third. TK finished fourth, and Bobby Labonte posted fifth place. Brett's like the friendliest out of all of us, but like, the thing is, like, that's... I, I say that's Brett playing poker. Because I'm going to I'm gonna have to call BS on that. I'm going to have to call BS on that one. I'm always the friendliest. You, oh. You, you know I, I, I have know been that, like, I... with you, bro. And oh, I have really, heard you I'm say, friendly. I have seen you hang people out to dry. I have seen you, in my rearview mirror, run out of gas. When I <laughs> and it's going to sound I'm like such a mean when I specifically ask you to fill up with gas. And you re you're like, no, no, I'm good. And on the last lap, you Turns run out, out of I gas. Good. And guess, guess, guess who didn't win that race? Me or Brett? <laughs> no, I've, I, have, I, hang, I will hang people out to dry at plate tracks, no doubt. But I don't hang out teammates out to dry unless they're being really stupid. Like, like 68. <laughs> yeah, for example, for example, the 68. Um, I just think my, um, my only okay. safety blanket is Brian C. Smith. And I love working with him at plate tracks. And he's not going to be there, there this weekend. Yeah, and then, <laughs> it breaks my heart because, like, that's my plate track buddy. Yeah, he's going to go on suicide runs with you. And it's a, like, that's why I was, like, really hoping that Adam would give Josh the night off. <laughs> Who's going to uh, run suicide runs with you? Nobody. <laughs> All right. uh, Being around 68 is basically a suicide run. That is true. One more um, a ra random thing, but I feel like possibly qualifying could possibly be a random factor or into this race because of just pit stall selections. If we ever have green flag pit stops by chance and how the race could start. Like, if, like, by some wild chance one of us starts on the pole or close to the front, like, that could dictate how we want to go proceed in the first stage on stage points, positioning from where we are at the start of the race, or just, how, I don't know, something like that. No, I feel what you're saying. Because, like, at the start, we'll be, like, if we're up front, it would give us, like, better control to, like, go for the lead and try to take control of the race. But at the same time, we'll be right up there to where everyone's trying to be and where all the big moves are happening, which could, like, po be possibly lead to um, us getting caught up into Rex, depending on how we qualify. If you, cool. if you want, Mike, we can make a deal now to not qualify and just hang out together. And that way, we won't lose the draft in the beginning. Like, in the first stage, hang out together meeting. Like, far enough back to not get caught up in anything. 
but together so let's say we lose a draft for whatever reason checking up and stuff that we won't go lap down you know what i'm saying i can see that um i mean, like if you're the... willing to make a deal right here and now i'll make a deal with you maybe but the annoyingly current... annoyingly yeah, they i mean partially... it, this deal's gonna be passed up you say maybe it's just a, it's the right here right now deal but Andrew, though, the thing is, though, is like I want to go, like I want to lead a lap, like lead laps, though, at Dega, but I don't want to risk completely destroying my car twenty laps into a ninety-four lap race or something ridiculous because I want stage points that I don't need. But uh, I mean, I, I if mean, Cam, if I oh, make a run to the front, Mike, you won't need to follow me. I'm saying in the first. 15 18 laps like whatever it, what, however long how is this how long is the stage like 25 laps something like that around then i think yeah like i'm saying like during like the first 15 18 laps like if you wanted to hang out in the back and i could hang out with you to make sure like we don't lose like the draft and go a lap down if for whatever crazy reason it goes green that's what i'm trying to say right i might do the crazy like start up front and if i go up front in like the first few laps, and somehow I'm in first and lead one lap. I might just literally pull down the back stretch and just drop all the way to the back, possibly. But the but it's just so tricky though, because I want to stay up front, but I want to make it to the end. So hopefully, know. Cam. See, this is where this is where I messed up at Michigan. I should not have utilized the taking advantage of the rule strategy at Michigan. I should have saved it for yeah, Vega. Should have saved it. It makes. Uh... <laughs> I, did, I disagree. I disagree. Because Dega, it's so much like yeah, it's easy easy to pass in Michigan relatively, but at Dega, it's so much easier to pass, and you're put at a disadvantage. Of you know how crazy that second stage start is. Like it gets crazy quickly, and who cares if you're up front? You know, like, you you can get passed in an instant. Here's the thing. I've noticed that the second stage, actually, the start of the second stage is usually really clean in these races. No one really does a lot. Everyone's pretty, everyone's usually pretty happy to ride until the final pit stop. <laughs> oh yeah, post pit stops. So you're right. That's when it goes crazy. Once that, once that last pit stop finishes up and Pretty much all of us know we're good on fuel is when literally we all start to and lose you, And by mind. then, usually the lead packs also thinned out by then because people have messed up getting on and off pit road. Hopefully I don't get stuck behind Dale exiting right. pits here again. Hey, he, here's, a, here's a deal that you can make, Mike. You willing is, to make a deal to me? What would that be? Okay, so you know how at Daytona you had a pretty nasty pit entry? Mm-hmm. And you kind of fell behind. Uh-huh. So if we pit on, if we go and we pit on the same lap, if one of us falls behind, will the other go and pick, you know, us up? Like if you fall behind, I'll drop back and pick you up. Oh yeah, yeah. And then if the other way around, you want to make that deal? I mean, I, yeah, definitely. I but... would say I would not make that deal. But I would not make is, that deal. But, like, but I'm willing thing... to drop. Like I'm willing to like do the drag the break at the See, rear of the pack why, to try to catch That's why it. I didn't offer you the deal. Mike has two wins this year. That's why I'm making Mike the deal. But the, yeah, it, it, honestly, it doesn't matter. Y'all are just going to be two cars outside the draft instead of one car outside the draft. Is basically what's going to happen in that We're situation. Though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. This um. If I ever manage to do, if we ever do green flag pit stops for Dega, I want to redeem myself this time and not blow my pit stop because at Daytona, I was so awful at pitting. Every green flag stop, I would overshoot my pit box and pretty much lose the draft almost every time. I was so bad at it. Don't worry. We're on the same page here. Yeah. That's why I like right before pit stops, I would try and charge a little bit to the front. So, because I'm I'm more conservative on my entries. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you don't want to risk. <laughs> if I'll I'm say, conservative usually I'm... on my entries and I'm in the back of the pack, I'm screwed. But if I'm conservative on my, on my entries in the front of the pack, I'm better. Here's my thing: is at Dega, most tracks I'm pretty conservative on pit entry. At Dega, I've raced at Dega enough to know where the breaking, where I can break, and where I need to break at. I feel pretty confident. My only concern, which has always been my biggest issue at plate tracks, is actually getting clean in and out of my box. Because if oh. you overshoot your stall at all, you are screwed. 
Dude, there. It's terrible. Absolutely. I almost like, lost it, the draft at Daytona because I did that. And I was so lucky that we pitted before like Alonso with them. Because when they yeah. got on my outside, that like they he just he should have kept it high. But he decided to try and side draft me. And dude, that just sucked me along with him. I'm like, okay, dude. Cool. Let's just do the exact opposite. But alright. Yeah, was that the uh, was that the sequence that ended with uh, him sideways yeah, in front of the field? So yeah, and and then I, so I went and I, I sucked up with his draft, which was completely inadvertent to you guys. And then it started getting a little bit hairy, and so on the back stretch, I don't know. I had like a feeling that something stupid was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, and you, I, I, you could see me. I let let out of the gas completely down the back stretch because. I was like, oh, something stupid is going to happen. And sure enough, in turn three, something stupid happened. And so <laughs> by the died. time I get there, I'm like already stopped. I'm like, oh, hey, this worked out. This episode of the ITPN Report is brought to you by FACES, the National Craniofacial Association. Donate today at faces-cranio.org to adopt a face, donate directly, fundraise yourself, or to gift match. Faces-Cranio.org to donate today. Thanks again. Now, back to the program. That's the thing that's really getting understated here, is how much this hurts pit strategy. Because normally our entire strategy at play tracks revolves around pitting together. I think you guys should still work together. Uh, I was... I, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll work something out. It, it, it's just going to be a lap-by-lap thing, you know? Like, at, at Dega, I thought that was a fun little thing. Like, as soon as we saw that, like, Radius and them were pitting, like, we were pretty much doing a chill pace. And as soon as we saw them pit, we were like, push, 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 everybody get bumper to bumper and, pit, like, knock out yeah, as fast as, 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 as we could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so that we knocked out as fast as like that first stop was terrible, but like that second stop, that's why we came out so far ahead. Is like we went like super chill pace, like those laps because they didn't want to lead. They wanted to be in line so they can pit and get us off guard. And yeah, it's, it's I, exactly as soon as they pit, you just start. Dude, you gotta what hammer what it out. Be, what did we inc- like? We decreased our lap time. But must have been like somewhere near a second because like. When you're chilling and going around Daytona and not doing, or yeah, Daytona and not doing anything, like you can go slow as hell, and they just yeah. didn't want to pass. Yeah, because we were trying to let them lead because we were like, okay, go ahead, lead. Because we, I think, if I remember right, I wanted to pit first because I was like, well, if we'll stay if we pit early, we stay on the lead lap. But I didn't want to be leading when we pitted because then they could just follow us. And didn't you? Weren't you the one that made the uh, how much fuel we should take call? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was right on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ended up not, I, don't, I don't think it ended up being a factor because like every single one of us were involved in a wreck. <laughs> Pitted, I that, think. Yeah, like the, next, the next caution, yeah, the next caution, I think I turned somebody in front of the Oh, I tried, I remember, that led to a great picture of me coming off turn four by myself in the lead. <laughs> Because <laughs> everyone behind me was involved in the wreck or was way behind when the wreck caution happened. And, uh, yeah, and then I think I, I think I pitted under that caution to check damage and also too. And then I had to pit again because Boy Blue ran into me. Well, I ran into Boy Blue actually, or Andrew. Hey. Because, uh, and Andrew starts yelling at me. He made me cry. In the chat. No, all, all I said, I, I well, I didn't say it. I I stated it with an exclamation point at the end. It was angry. It made me sad. So I was driving down the back stretch, and I avoided a wreck. Y- you know the one that you're talking about with Noah, Mike. Oh yeah. I was oh, driving, yeah. It, Noah. driving. I ducked down a little bit, driving in a straight line. Next thing I know, I see Brit in my mirror turn straight into me. And I said, what the heck, Brett? Gosh <laughs> darn it. <laughs> sure. So, something more or less like that. And then Brian, yeah, sure. quickly, Brian C. Smith quickly came on the radio and said, hey, he, he had no choice. 
Yeah, it was literally I, I, a, there was a truck wrecking against the wall, said, and I had to. I probably said something along the lines of "Okay, but still, heck, Brett." Thanks. Like, probably <laughs> something like that. Yeah. But it was, it was like I was like I, I had no I mean, options. My options were either to drive into a stop truck or to swerve and bump Boy Blue <laughs> into bump Andrew. On the, and on the like, bright side, it prepared my soul for being taken out by Brett later on in the year. I have not taken you out all year. Well, <laughs> okay. well, walk into Glenn, maybe. <laughs> Why do we have maybe. a full bullet Brett video? Why do we have <laughs> that? that is, I forgot about that. I'll be honest. <laughs> Maybe. I, I I apologize for getting salty at you, Brett. In the heat of Maybe the moment, no. I thought you, you just it. overreacted and turned straight into me. He, he you were also, to be fair, you were also under the influence a little bit in that race. I was driving in a straight line, Brett. You turned into me. <laughs> If I you may have been driving in a straight was, line, then. Okay. You were not driving in a straight line for that entire race. <laughs> yes. This is true. Well, this is true. But. Comma. Yeah, he had to turn, what, twice? Yeah, twice a lap. Yeah, that's all you have to turn. <laughs> the how much is, How much of, of, of juice are you going to drink before the Talladega? Oh, no. Hopefully no, zero. Dude. Zero. Oh, no, no, dude. This is this is one of those races I really want to get into the playoffs. If I were to make a comparison for the points, like coming into um, Dega, this reminds me of the 2020 playoffs when we had Jimmy, Maddie D, and Willie B all like within like two points of each other, three or whatever it was, and they're all trying to get two spots, and one might get out or one's going to be let. I don't freaking won that race. I hey, just, so, just be prepared for that. Uh, remember that Ryan Newman move. The last corner to get into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Your ass is better be prepared for that. <laughs> Although I will probably get a point penalty. I would literally. You don't understand. If you move me on the last lap for a playoff spot, I will. You don't understand the level of hell you would be raining down upon yourself. Right. I have you muted half the time. You can't hurt me. <laughs> I can hurt you in the playoffs. <laughs> that's why I. That's why I already like halfway threatened Mike. I, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to blackmail Mike into helping my ass. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is blackmail. But do I want? I already told my teammates I'm not helping them, so I do need help. You kind of ran into issues there, yeah. See, like I keep telling y'all, I'm gonna help, so maybe y'all will help me. See, like, like here's the thing: like I'm gonna blackmail, I'm gonna blackmail Mike here, and then I'm gonna go to the other people in the playoffs and act like I'm talking to them individually and blackmail them each until <laughs> until I have the whole field helping me. This is my strategy. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if we are using the 2020 T Daytona season finale as a uh, as a marker, um, what ended up happening there was William Byron won the race, who is the second of the three in points. So Dalton's going to win, and then I'm going to make the playoffs, and Boy Blue's going to miss by six points. All right, Dalton, you want to go back to that strategy of wrecking bread on lap one? <laughs> no. no, don't take me or the field with you. I mean, you said you're leading lap one. Come on now. That that's is one of the I other. Somehow, that's if I somehow win the pole or something. We should make it. Uh, that's one thing we do need to address, real quick. And we need to hit up uh, it ITPN about this. If you qualify, you shouldn't be able to take an EOL. That means you're going <laughs> for the pole. Like you can't volunteer for that. Like that shouldn't be a thing. No, but the thing is, you could literally qualify and then literally drop to the back on the back stretch on lap one. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but I'm yeah, saying, no, then it like, be, you know, those you people are like, like the they're they're like, oh, I didn't get the pole. I should I should ask for an EOL. Like, no, dude. Like, this is dang. No, you, you should be allowed to ask. You should be allowed to ask for EOL. But you either in, qualify or don't qualify. In real life, NASCAR teams will do that from time to time, where they will qualify and then they will look at their where they're starting, and they're starting ahead of some fast cars, especially backmarker teams. Which Rick I guess we're leaving. Yeah, but like that means like, there was like, a couple times back when they would do like the reverse grid during COVID. That like I think Chad <laughs> yes, Mitchum, Chad, 
Chad Fincham was on pole, I think, once because of owner points, because they had bought like the CGR owner points. That was a rain out. That was before COVID. Oh, that was before it was a rain out. Okay, but Chad Fincham was on pole, and like he would voluntarily go to the back that's because he's Chad Fincham. Yeah, that's, that's a different scenario. I'm saying these guys who are like going for pole or not. I'm like, dude, no, what? you, you. By qualifying, you're putting yourself in that hornet's nest, and you need to get out of it on your own. In That's real life, opinion. you can voluntarily go to the back on a start yeah, or a restart. This ain't so. real life. Like, this is... Like, because you're going and putting yourself behind the people who intentionally didn't qualify to be out of the mess. Well, they can also ask for an ELL. Like, they're getting... No, nah, you can't, though. I mean, you don't get it, because you're already in the back. Okay. I just think they're getting the best of both worlds. Is they have the option to qualify, and they go for it. They don't like their starting position. They you get an EOL, you so forget. they start behind. They start behind the people who intentionally didn't qualify. It's like you forget that there's a bonus point for qualifying. There is. Yep. Oh. <laughs> well, today I learned. But well, it, it looks like qualifying the, just got more important to her. But, but, like, the thing is, you still shouldn't be able to, like, drop it, you know? Like, you, I am I am going, and that's part of my strategy is to start in the back. And when, when seven people qualify and want to drop to the back, like, you're getting the best of both scenarios. Like, you're staying out of trouble, and you're going for the point, which I think is, like... It's a pretty lame thing to do. Okay. I mean, that's just my opinion. Like, yeah, like you're literally getting the best of both worlds in that scenario. I just think it should be one or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just my dumb person self that starts in the rear every single race saying that. And I get to see these people drop behind me, and I'm like, no, I want to be starting last. Yeah, here's the thing about your whole start at the back thing. It hurts you so much every single week. I enjoy it. I, you might enjoy it, but like, the number of points you lose because you have to use your tires and possibly risk damage to gain track position, you do. You can only make an argument cost? for someone the back every right four points. Did you broke up, Dalton? Yeah, you you were, you were breaking up there. Oh. I'm sorry to inform you that we've lost Dalton Kelly. <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree, and, like, part of the season, like, I was going to qualify every race, um, and I think it was, I was going to, I told myself, I'm like, I'm going to be a lot more aggressive this year, a lot more aggressive this year, and my worst race of the year was at Charlotte, when I came, uh, when I let off the gas, because I, I got a little bit, I, I touched the apron coming off of two, and then I, I let off the gas to let Zach and Mike buy. And I didn't give Zach enough room, and I, I ruined Zach and Mike's race. And th that would have been, like, an easy top ten for me. And instead, it ended up being, like, my worst race of the year as far as finishing position. And, Is that your... like, and at Dover, I qualified, and I just didn't know how to... Well, I conserved a set of tires that I ended up not being able to use, and that hurt me a little bit. Your tire strategy has been has hurt you so much. You've lost no, so many points here, on here's bad the strategy thing. this year. Here's the thing. If, I, if the caution came out with the way you guys were racing, and I thought it was, I honestly thought it was, I would have been the only one with tires at Dover. Whereas, what, I was going to finish 6th or 7th? I ended up finishing, what, 8th? So, instead of finishing... Sixth or seventh, I finished eighth. Whereas, if the caution came out, I was gonna win. Okay, so let's just really go through it. At a, at a, let's say IRP, you pitted and lost one spot. Yeah. To Kurt Van, that's one point. At Dover, you lost 
two points. There's your difference in the points right there. <laughs> yeah. But there was there was what? Uh at least a twelve point differential at Charlotte because I was aggressive and I was going up for stage points. And I wrecked and finished twenty first. I enjoy starting in the back because it gets it lets me get the feel for the field. I'm not as good right. as in, like I racer as everybody else, you know. Like it, it takes me a while to get used to like racing with other people. He's only I, I don't like to be aggressive. Despite huh? I know What's he's only three four points. points behind. You're like within three points despite starting in the back for every race. Well, I qualify. Like, it's not making a difference at this point. I think a lot of us in here, like, if, like, I f- feel like there's a lot of races that we look back on that could have been big point swings that we just, like, that torn at us a little bit this season. I think if like, I had Chicago, run, if I, I, had I, Chicago, I had the winning strategy two times in that race. And what did my <laughs> teammates awesome. do? What did my teammates do? I had an <laughs> unstoppable freaking strategy that nobody in the field took. And yeah, and it instead, it it... instead, I have teammates that don't know how to pull out of the race when they have energy damage. <laughs> I uh, my my end is just Michigan. If I had went to the top, if I had went to the bottom after pinning at Michigan, I win that race, or I finished second to Leicester. Yeah, like, Michigan was my disappointing race of the year, to be honest with you. I was you like, and Dalton. You and Dalton just had the absolute wrong strategy at Michigan. Well, I felt really good. Well, I felt like that was going to be a lot more hectic of a race than it was because I was looking back to the year before. There were wrecks everywhere, and I was like, "Oh, they're going to wreck all the time," and then it's going to be a long green run, and then it ended up being the opposite. It was like a what was it? A green white checkered at the end. It was a, it was a long green run followed by a green white check. Yeah, and then the green white checkered, the and I, I had to check up at the restart because I got I got slammed from behind, and I slammed into Alonzo, I think, because I got slammed, and I had to check up, and sure enough, like going into turn one, I already lost a pack, and I was like, well, this race is done. I I ran the top, burnt my tires off running the top. Did it gain on Lester and actually lost ground. Let the people behind me run them down. And then when they tried to pass me, I pushed too hard on older tires and spun down into Justin Duran and caused I mean, a wreck and brought out the green white checkered. Uh, it was uh, just a hand, no of driving. Bad, no matter how bad you might have done at Michigan, at least you didn't wreck twice on the cool down lap. I know a guy who did that. I don't want to name <laughs> the name. He wrecked twice on the cool down lap. I mean... Yikes! I mean, for me... Probably won't. I've had something that screamed to me like Chicago Land. I felt like I had a top five bagged because I was running top five most of the way, but I pretty much wrecked myself after green flag cycles because I called to Nick and probe stuff when they're side by side. And, uh, Nick blinked on the bottom, and I was gonna go oh. on the bottom, and I pretty much wrecked myself pretty much and pretty much finished David Durant's night just because oh. I freaked out. When th- when Nick blinked and wrecked myself after- and threw away a top five, uh, Homestead that's one that I'm just frustrated at. I thought I had a decent run going and I just th- threw it away there because Felber spun twice in front of me and I just threw it away. Um, and- Homestead was a weird one because that was the weird strategy race. Yeah. That was the uh, fuel strategy race. Yeah, and I, yeah, I thought fuel. saving fuel would have worked out, and then I got I got it. Got I racing really cuts down your fuel mileage once you get damaged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. You know, like, it, 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 it was bad. At Homestead. I went from like three laps to the good to like four laps to the bad after one tiny piece of contact. I'm like, cool. I uh, Homestead. What I learned at Homestead was that you can save just as much and be a little bit quicker when saving. Because, like, I I thought I was doing such a good job of saving, and I was thinking everybody in front of me is going to run out. And then everybody in front of me also made it, and I still got six. So I was like, I mean, okay. I, I looked back at a race, and I'm like, dude, I should have pitted. I felt so bad. Like, afterwards, yeah. at, so well. Charlotte, at Charlotte and Auto Club, I feel like at Charlotte, I got stage points at Charlotte, I think. And then it's early in stage two, I just brushed the wall ever so slightly. 
And, you know, you think just a light little wall brush on iRacing wouldn't hurt you. I was 10 miles an hour down the rest of the race, even with the damage fully repaired. But, I think we've been ranting and raving for a while. Uh, if, we, if you don't mind, I'll ask Adam Kuhn and Josh Coppin what else they have to ask us instead of us just going off on tangents like we've been. <laughs> this is SPLD in a nutshell, right? Yeah, here. dude, we, we go and off on PBR, tangents. And PBR. <laughs> well, we've been going on for a while now, so I don't mind stopping if you guys are ready. Hey, we yeah. can keep on going if you want, man. I can tell. I'm kidding. <laughs> Jerk. Well, thanks for you guys for joining us, and thanks for everyone for listening, and tune in this Saturday at 7.30 Eastern for the Talladega regular season finale in the In the Pits News Truck Series. Which one of these guys are going to make it and join Michael Kruger in the playoffs? <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> here for our racing. And um, thanks for Josh for joining me, and we'll see you Saturday night. <laughs>